You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Solari, and today we're going to be talking about embracing who you are. And that means the physical attributes, the the inner skills and talents that only you signaturely have, you know, all the great things that make up who you are, but embracing that. And if you're still trying to figure out what those qualities are, well, you know what? We all have to figure that out. So that is the point of today's show. And in fact, in our next segment, we're going to be joined by Jackson Bird, who in 2015 came out as transgender. And he's going to share with us kind of his journey and how he had to figure out how to embrace who he was. And then also we're going to be taking your call, so make sure to, you know, consider, you know, what stress is currently in your life? You know, where do you feel like you're holding yourself back? We want you to embrace who you are and get back on track. And if you want to hear today's show again, feel free to go to livingfullout.com. You can hear all the episodes there. Or we have a a 24-hour radio station which plays 24 hours a day, living full out. And in fact, that's also how you can hear the live show. And you can access that by going to livingfullout.com or go to the app stores and just look for living full out. So I share all that with you because I get it. Motivation comes when you need it, right? Sometimes we're really good and the day is going along. And and then other times we just get, you know, we stumble over a hardship or a challenge or we sabotage ourselves. And so that's when we want to be there to support you. Now, I'm getting word for a producer that we do have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi there. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can we help you? So, recently, uh, my brother has moved in uh, back home with my parents. Uh, I currently live out of state, and he lives back with them in another state, and the result of the, the cause of this move is, you know, a lot of poor life decisions on his part. And as such, I've sort of been having to act as mediator because my parents see me as their confidant and my brother sees me as his confidant. And unfortunately, this is putting a lot of strain on all of our relationships. So I'm just trying to figure out what my position is. Do I have a right to detach and sort of save myself the emotional strain? Or is it, you know, my duty to continue acting as this person. I'm just not sure. I am so glad that you called in on this topic. And honestly, you're actually not alone because we've had people on social media ask very similar questions. Okay. And, and my take on it is it's good not to be in the middle. Okay. What you want your role to be is support both individuals. Well, your parents on one side and your brother on the other side, you want to be sounding boards for them. You want to be that person that they can talk to, you can give advice, but you don't want to be the one in the middle brokering the deal, okay? Because mm-hmm. that's not your job. Your job is to be the best son you can be, the best supporting brother you can be, but you have your life to lead, right? And you can't mm-hmm. look forward when you're looking backwards. And I'm not saying that your parents and brother are in your past. I mean, they're in your current but at the same time, they're, they're not allowing you to thrive. They're, they're putting all this pain and pressure on you. And, and that's what I feel through the phone. Mm. Okay. So what I would say to them is I would say to both of them, you could say individually or on a, the next time the family's together, say, listen, I, I love you all. And you can call me, you can email me, you can text me anytime. But when it comes to this bickering back and forth or any of that, I'm going to be out of it. But if either of you need to, like, come to me for support, I am so there for you. And so let's just say your parents come to you and they're like, oh, I can't believe your brother did this again. Tell your mom and dad, listen, don't complain to me about my brother, but tell me how it makes you feel. And let me help you with Mm -hmm. that, how it makes you feel. Okay? Same thing. Your brother comes to you. Ah, they're driving me crazy. I can't believe they did that. You tell your brother, listen, I'm here for you to vent but not attack the parents. Like, how do you feel? 
How can I make you feel yeah. better? Do you see that? Sure. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So that becomes your new role, not the person in the middle, not the person to, you know, be the one that pink, you know, swings the pendulum the other way because you don't want to be that vote, right? And so, um, so I'm so glad you called in. And if you do that, I think you're going to find that's going to relieve a lot of stress off your shoulders. And it's going to allow you to maintain the healthy relationships with those individuals. Okay. Yeah. But thank you so much for calling in and we'll be sending positive wishes your way. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. So glad that he called in on that topic, right? Because when we're trying to think about embracing who we are, how can he be who he wants to be in the world if he's giving so much of himself to these other people? It's kind of like going to the bank, right? If we're constantly withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing energy, and we're never putting money in the bank, then we don't have any money there. He needs to put money in his emotional bank for himself, his hopes, his dreams, his desires. And then when he does withdrawals and gives energy away, that's going to be okay. So I'm getting word from our producer that we have another caller on the line. We'll say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, thank you for calling. How can we help you? Looks like our caller has disappeared. We will get them back and bring them back on. So what I want everybody to think about today is when you are dealing with conflict, when you have a stress or a challenge in your life, it's hard sometimes to embrace who we are because there's all this stuff, right? There's the emotional energy, the woulda, coulda, shouldas, the, the, I, 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 all the negative thoughts that we can have in our mind. Then there's also this place of doubt, insecurity. What if I make the wrong decision? What if I make a mistake? And what I'm here to tell you all today is it's really hard to embrace who you are when you give your power away to those dark thoughts, okay? It's really important to choose your words. I will, I can. And it's important to have a pep talk with yourself sometimes. Look in the mirror on a daily basis and tell yourself, something that you're proud of, or you did a good job today. And I know that might sound a little silly, but it's actually not. Because you would say those things to other people, but we don't always say it to ourselves. So take an opportunity when you're in the bathroom, when you're in the car, tell yourself some positive affirmations or, or you know, give yourself kudos for things that you do right. Now, we have our caller back, so we're going to go check in with them again. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, thank um, you for so coming. Uh, mm -hmm. So everyone keeps asking me why, what I plan to do after college, and I have no idea. Um, the stress is starting to get to me because like, everyone is asking me, and I'm not really sure how to handle this. Do you have any advice? Well, first of all, I, I embrace the unknown, and I think you should too. Let me ask you a question. The people in your life who claim to have it all figured out, they, they have their major lockdown. They have an idea of what they want to do in their life. Are they 100% happy in their life? Is everything working full throttle? From the outside, that's the way that it looks. Right there. From the outside, it's the way it looks, right? So the thing is, if you were to tell people what they want to hear, so what are you going to do? You know, what's your plans afterwards? You could tell them what they want to hear, to make it all look good and sound good. But the best thing that you can do is to be honest, open, vulnerable, and be like, you know what, I'm not really sure. And, 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 and that's where you are now, and that's exactly who I want you to be. Because if you tell people what they want to hear, then you're kind of putting this expectation on yourself that your life has to turn out that way. The beauty of where you are, and again, I applaud you for, for telling them I don't know, because you're leaving yourself open to color, to opportunity, where all those other people are locked into, this is what I'm, they're putting down the gauntlet, this is who I'm going to be, and this is how my life is going to look. They're putting that pressure on themselves. You, on the other hand, you're leaving life to be more fluid, more open. Do you see that? There's freedom in that. What? Are you so? So what I want you to do is I want you to, you know, stay where you are, keep an open mind, 
And anybody who says to you, what are your future plans? Just say, you know what? My life is being written every day and I'll let you know. Okay. That's how you retain your power. So thank you so much for calling in and everybody. When we come back, we're going to be joined by our inspirational guest, Jackson Bird. He's going to talk to us about being transgender and what that journey has been like. It's all about embracing who we are as we strive to live full out. Stay with us. We'll be coming right back after this break, living our lives full out together. We'll be back. Professional skateboarder Tony Hawk here with Bugs Money and Daffy Duck to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have the energy to skate through anything. <laughs> nice play on white, Doc. That's how I roll, Bugs. So whether you like to work the half pipe, now that's catching air, kick the soccer ball around, or dance in your room, just move it your way for an hour a day. The way you like to move, as long as you're moving. Carve out some time every day and get active. Because it's time to do a 180 on what you think exercise is. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. So be a player. Be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At www.letsmove.gov. Let's hear that one more time, Doc. That's www.letsmove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. Every day I wake up at five to give dad his medicine. Every day I wake up at five to give dad his medicine. At six, I make his breakfast. Every day I wake up at five to give dad his medicine. At six, I make his breakfast. At seven, I shower. Every day I wake up For at those five caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. I'm Sarah, and this is my story. I'm Ellen, and this is my story. One night, I was at a bar. One night, I was at a bar. I was having fun with my friends. I was having fun with my friends. I had one too many drinks. I had one too many drinks. I got behind the wheel to go home. I got a cab to go home. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. It happened so quickly, I barely had time to react. It happened so quickly, the cabbie barely had time to react. I swerved. The cab swerved. I can't believe it. I hit a guy. I cannot believe it. The cabbie just missed a guy. I wish I took a cab. Thank goodness I took a cab. You have the choice to save a life. Don't drive buzzed. It's a decision you'll never regret. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. If you think depression is all in a person's head, you're right. It's a brain illness. And like other illnesses, it has symptoms. Depression can make those who suffer from it feel hopeless. It can even lead to suicide. Learn how to stop depression from taking another life. Call SAVE, Suicide Awareness Voices of Education. 1-888-511-SAVE. On the web at save.org. I'm Alec Baldwin. Like any parent, I'm concerned about children's health. Many kids don't eat as they should and are at risk for long-term health problems like diabetes and heart disease. But here's good news. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and other low-fat vegetarian foods can protect our kids and keep the rest of the family healthy too. For a free booklet, call the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine at 1-877-685-KIDS. Or visit www.kidsgethealthy.org. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about embracing who we are. And that is not always easy, right? We have to kind of figure out who are we and, you know, what, what do we bring to the table in life and to relationships and to our careers? Well, our inspirational guest today is no stranger to having to figure out who he is. Uh, we have Jackson Bird today, who in 2015 decided to embrace who he was and came out as transgender. And, you know, we applaud that journey and really figuring out what makes him happy and what lights him up inside. So I'd like to welcome Jackson to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hi. Well, absolutely. First of all, I just want to say for the record, your personality is like times 10. Okay. If anybody goes and looks you up (laughs) online, you're silly, you're fun, and you are just like, you're somebody I just want to go out to happy hour with and just have a good time, right? But, (laughs) you know, you're... Your life has come with laughs, just like you are now, but it's also come with, you know, leaving a lot within you, you know, a a lot of internal Mm -hmm. dialogue and conflict and wishing you could just yell to the world how you feel inside, but not being able to really allow that to show. And and that is a lot of times the transgender walk, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's a, it can be a very internal thing. Um, I was uh, doing some writing recently. I have this is a shameless plug. I have a book coming out later this year that's a memoir. And when I sat down to write it, your one challenge with writing a memoir is wanting to protect the privacy of loved ones and people in your life while still telling your story. And I was struck by how easy that was actually uh, for me to do because the whole process of figuring out your gender and coming to your identity is such an internal one that telling that whole story actually, there weren't that many people in my life who were a part of that story. It's like, even if from the outside, you know, I had a loving family and I had lots of friends, um, inside I was still very lonely and struggling really hard. So it can kind of be that lonely, hidden experience, even if everything else in your life looks like you're surrounded by people. Yeah, and that's so interesting. I mean, we're talking today about embracing who you are. And when you were younger, obviously, you were born a female, right? But you obviously were, you know, a tomboy. You 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 enjoyed doing what the boys did. But you had a moment with your mom where that was really the first conflict that you had. Can you share with us? Yeah. So uh, growing up, uh, my parents were more than reasonably accepting of me being a tomboy. Um, I wore my brother's hand me downs and mostly shopped in the boys section, and uh, you know, all all that kind of stuff. And when I was nine, I just finished fourth grade. Uh, My mom and I were at this street festival that happens every summer uh, to kick off the summer in my hometown. And I had gone, she gave me some money to go get a funnel cake. And I went to this street cart that was selling funnel cake. And when he handed me the funnel cake, he said, here you go, young man. He kind of mistook me for a boy. And I didn't actually even realize it at first. I misunderstood what he said and said, I thought he said, here you go, young (laughs) ma'am. And I was like, that's a weird phrase. And then as it started dawning on me that, oh, wait, maybe he said young man. Maybe he thought I was a boy. I'm thinking how cool that would be that he mistook me as a boy. As I was sort of working that out in my head, uh, I felt my mom's hand on my arm and she was kind of pulling me away and saying, see, this is what happens. You dress like a boy. People are going to think that you're a boy. And that I think I was finally at the age where when she said that, I just realized like, oh, like I know that other people in my life judge me for dressing like a boy and looking masculine, but I had always thought my mom was okay with it. And that was the first time I think I ever saw her be maybe embarrassed by my presentation or thinking that maybe there was something wrong that I should grow out of. I wasn't quite sure what it was, but I felt for the first time she wasn't entirely in my corner. And so that sort of, that made me shift things. I I think I sort of was like, wow, okay, if even she's not supportive, maybe I need to to try growing out of this. And so we like the next day went to the mall and I bought a bunch of girly clothes, spaghetti strap tank tops and baby doll t-shirts. This was 1999. That's what was it at the time. Uh, And I tried that for a couple of years and it was, you know, it was nice to not be sort of uh, picked on as much if I, because I kind of fit in a little bit better, at least the way I looked. But 
I've always been a bit of a dork, so I was not the most popular kid even after that. But um, yeah, I think that was well, the it, first time that I became aware. Became aware of that, exactly. And and I know that you enjoyed mm-hmm. high school. Again, you're fun, you're energetic, you know, you just enjoyed your peers and, and hanging out and, and you really embraced being a female through those years. But what I'm curious about is, because how would you, I don't want to go too far into your future now, but how would you identify yourself currently in terms of like your appeal? Are, I mean, today, are you more attracted to women, to men, to both? What would you say? Uh, yeah, I sort of, I would say as many people of my generation and the generation below me, I'm sort of, you know, uh, I don't care what gender someone is. I'm sort of attracted to a person regardless of their gender. And I I think that's, um, I have found that that's fairly common among trans people. Not all trans people, of course. A lot of trans people are very solidly straight or gay. Um, But I think for some of us, when we spent so long having to figure out what our gender was and, and what all of that meant, it just kind of it almost becomes silly to think that we were like, to, like that would matter so much. You kind of start just being like, oh, what is gender anyway? Like it just becomes this whole big, like, uh, I don't know, wibbly wobbly mess of things. You know what? I actually do get that, Jackson, because you're more attracted to the personality, right? Not so much mm-hmm. the gender. Yeah. And, I, and I'm with you because um, being legally blind, I can't see people. I mean, I, granted, I guess I could hear their voice, but actually there are some voices that I could think they're male or female and I, I can't see what they are, you know? So it, right. it is really, it is really uh, freeing to know that you can love the person for their soul, for their mind, you know, not just based upon, you know, their financial status, their gender, you know, all of that. So in some ways, you kind of became the big winner on that one in terms of like personal growth, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, kind of what you were just saying to to see that that sort of core soul of someone more so than other elements about them. I think that's really important, especially when you're thinking about a a long term relationship, um, because you never know what's going to happen in each other's lives. Like things might, um, you know, different illnesses or tragedy or financial distress, like so many different things can change about who you are, who the person you're with is. And but if you have that you know, love for each other on that very deep core level, not about some attribute of them, then, you know, I think that's probably a, a really strong thing. Well, and, and at such a young age to be able to kind of gather that insight. And, you know, what what I think is also so interesting is that you kind of had to suppress some of these feelings that you were having about who you wish you could be, almost like a fantasy, right? This is who I wish I could be. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I'll, I'll be this. And so we're going to come back after a break, and I want to, you know, expand more on your story, so stay with us. And everybody, today we're talking about embracing who you are, and that's not done in a snap. It really means feeling your emotions. When people say things to you that make you sad, angry, or, or, or trying different experiences, right, and seeing what you like, that is the key to living full out. So... Stay with us. We're going to be coming right back after this break. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show, and we will be right back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. 
Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Solari, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want. And we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Nancy Solari and the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about embracing who you are. And we have brought you an inspirational guest, Jackson Bird, who has had to go through exactly that journey. Uh, coming out in 2015 as transgender, that was not easy. So Jackson is sharing with us his walk and would like to welcome him back to the show. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. So, oh, Jackson, I know that, again, through high school, you enjoyed those years. You had kind of a safe community of people who knew who you were, and you kind of embraced, you know, being a female and kind of packaged away those other feelings you might have had. But there was a moment in time when you were at your university when somebody else came out on Facebook, and that really parted the clouds for you of what was possible. Can you share with us about that? Yeah, so so throughout high school, I had sort of heard about trans people. I like kind of had an idea they existed, but I didn't think it really applied to me um, because I didn't see many examples of what that actually meant. I didn't know transitioning was a thing. 
Um, so I thought whatever was wrong with me, these feelings I had that I should have been born a boy, um, and that I really wanted to live my life that way. I thought it was just something I could never do anything about. So I decided, well, I guess if I have to be a woman, I'm going to try to be the best that I can be. And so that's sort of, you know, what I did in high school and into college. Um, but towards the end of my, my freshman year of college at Southwestern University down in Georgetown, Texas, uh, a fellow student posted a, a very long Facebook status just saying that uh, she was coming out as a trans woman and that starting the next day, she would be dressing as a woman. She uh, had a new name that we should call her. She was going to go by she and her pronouns and just sort of explaining, you know, what all that meant and how she got there. And I remember reading that and just being like, what? You can do that? Like, it's that easy? You, you just tell people and this, and that's who you are and that's how you're going to live your life? Like, for some reason, I just had never realized that it could be that simple. Um, and that didn't unlock things enough for me to be like, oh, this is what I'm going to do, um, because I had very deeply repressed things and very much did not understand a lot of things. But what it did do was sort of open my eyes to some other possibilities and some other terminology that I was able to put together to Google. Um, and even though I did grow up with the Internet, I think the World Wide Web actually launched the year I was born, technically. Um, but I never really knew exactly enough words to Google anything and really, you know, figure things out for myself. But that moment when I saw her come out, I um, was able to finally start putting some of the puzzle pieces together and get a little bit closer to finding an answer to how I had always felt and if there were maybe some solutions to that. Well, and, and I, I want to ask you, coming out, right? I mean, what does that mean? What, what, what is that process like? the coming out process only in the sense that, I mean, do you think about it? You think about it, you figure out, you kind of role play in your head how you're going to tell people. And then one day you, you just do it. Or did you tell people in like, you know, segments of time and, and then it was kind of like a, a less of a blow to people or I, I don't know. What is that like? What is that process? Yeah. Well, anytime I think back on the time period around when I was coming out, like if someone is telling me that that's something that they're working on, I always like, I almost get like contact hives from them. I'm like, oh, I know how stressful that time period is. I never want to go back to that. Um, I also, I always like to bring up that for coming out as transgender, um, you know, not to like compare challenges or anything, but it is a, can be a little bit more tricky than simply coming out um, with regards to your sexual orientation. For the most part, people understand if you come out as gay, they might have some stereotypes, but they pretty much know what that means. When you come out as trans, you're usually also coming out um, with a new name different pronouns. You might be starting some type of medical transition or just social transition, dressing differently, doing your hair differently. So there's a lot more that you have to come out about. It's usually a big turning point um, in your life and how you're presenting yourself. And there's still a lot of misunderstanding about what it even means. So you're also usually having to educate the person that you're coming out to. So it's already an intensely emotional and scary thing to do. Um, but then at the same time, you have to be the teacher in that moment as well. So it is really, really um, stressful. And for me, I mean, it took years and years. It, it took, I think, about six years from the time that I saw that Facebook post from my classmate uh, until I actually came out publicly. And for most of that time, it was just trying to figure out really who I was and uh, if I wanted to transition, if this was something I wanted to ever tell people, or if maybe maybe I could just survive without ever doing anything about it. Maybe I could tamp it down again. Um, so I went through a lot of phases and a lot of soul searching over those years. But when I finally decided that I was going to come out, I was going to transition, I was going to let people in on this part of me, it was about a six-month process. I am a very type A person. <laughs> so I, uh, I put together a 10-page resource document explaining terminology and concepts and gender theory and linking to documentaries and books and articles and music videos and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I gave that to every person I came out to. I also had a spreadsheet listing all of the people in my life, family, close friends, um, people who needed to know before I was going to post a public video, which was something I was going to do. So anyone who needed to hear it from me, I had a spreadsheet saying when and where and how I was going to tell each of them. And then I would send them this resource package afterwards. Um, and all of that culminated in coming out on my YouTube channel um, shortly after my 25th birthday. And because at that point, I had been a spokesperson for a nonprofit for a while, and I had a, a small audience of about 10,000 people on YouTube. 
Um, and so it was one of those things where I, there were a lot of people to tell in my kind of career and online community. So I had to do it in a semi-public way, which was some added stress to the whole process. I, I bet. And actually, that was so insightful to like just hear what you put together in preparation to do that. And, you know, one of the things that it's actually been studied, that one of the best sounds to people is their name. Hearing someone's name, mm. like when I hear Nancy, I'm like, you know, I have like a Scooby-Doo moment. Or, you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, or some people, you know, it's like this exciting thing to hear your name. But how did you choose Jackson? Yeah, well, so, I mean, I think, especially if you're a more binary trans person, you know, transitioning from female to male or male to female, um, oh, oftentimes the one of the first things you start thinking about is, ooh, what should my name be? Um, and for me, there weren't really many that were sticking. I was trying a lot um, of names that I just thought sounded cool or maybe sounded similar to my birth name or something like that. Um, but then several years before I really came out, I sort of told my mom, like, hey, I've been thinking about my gender and remember some of the ways that I acted as a kid that's never really gone away. And we kind of had a big talk. And one of the things I asked her in that conversation was, if I had been assigned male at birth, like, did you have any names picked out that you were going to name me? Um, and actually, almost, I only recently found out that she didn't even know my gender before I was going to be born. She didn't find out for my brother or me. Just my parents chose not to know. Um, and so she had picked out names for, for both girl names and boy names. Uh, and the first name she told me was Harrison. I guess that was the top pick that she remembered. And Harrison's a great name. Uh, unfortunately, my last name is Bird, B-I-R-D, like the animal. And Harrison can be short to Harry pretty quickly. So I was like, ooh, Harry Bird. I don't think that's... That might be, uh, I might get made fun of for that. So I threw Harrison out and I kept trying to come up with other names that I kind of like. Um, and then a few months before I publicly came out, when I told my mom, like, hey, I'm definitely, I'm going to come out publicly. I'm going to transition. Do you remember any other, uh, any of the other names that you're going to name me? Because on the, on the one hand, at that point, I still hadn't really found one that I liked enough and that fit for me. Um, but also when she had told me Harrison, even though I didn't like it being shortened to Harry and it didn't seem like the right name, there was something about it that felt so powerful that it was a name that she chose. Um, mm. It just felt like a strong connection to her. And there's also, you know, yeah. choosing your own name, whether, you know, whether you're changing your name because you're trans or for any other reason, like, especially if people know that you chose your own name, there's so much pressure to it because you know that people know that. So then they're going to kind of judge you based on what name you pick. So I also like kind of having an out of when people are like, Oh, how'd you pick your name? I'm like, well, my mom did uh, because I sort of jumped ahead. But, when I asked her, one of the names that she did say was Jackson. And when she said that, it mm. kind of clicked. And I was like, that's that's the name. That's it. And I love that. My mom I picked it. love it. It's a handsome name. I like it. Jackson. Thank good. You. I like it. Very strong. It's a good name. Um, and, and as we round out this interview, you know, I, I just want to say thank you so much for for being so open and honest with your journey and what you went through and just the stages of you know, embracing who you are. I think that's a big, a big moment for you. And you've, I'm sure you've had so many moments, but when we consider this show being the living full out show and we consider the topic mm -hmm. of embracing yourself, what does living full out mean to you? Well, yeah, I think that's definitely something I thought about a lot when I was trying to decide if transitioning was the right path for me, because I think there were times um, this is not how it is for all trans people. But for me, there were times where I was like, I I could maybe keep this inside for the rest of my life. Like, maybe I can do this. I can pretend to be a girl for the rest of my life. Um, but I always knew I wouldn't be living full out. I wouldn't be living to my fullest, happiest potential <clears throat> if I was keeping that inside of me. Um, so I think, Any, you know, just... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, just that, you know, I think coming out and transitioning and, and being true to myself and to everyone around me about who I am, that's what living full out is for me. Mm, I love that, you know, and thank you so much for being on today's show and sharing with us. And we're going to just continue to send positive vibes your way. And you just keep giggling and laughing. <laughs> and, you know, that is so living full out, right? Humor. So... Thank you so Absolutely. much, Jackson, and uh, we appreciate well, your time today. Me. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. And 
For everybody listening today, I mean, Jackson just shared his powerful story, and we're so glad that we can inspire, that we can educate, that we can motivate. And you may have a story as well that our community can benefit from. So if you have overcome a conflict, if you have a disability and you want to share with us how you manage and how you stay independent, if you have overcome abuse of any kind, whatever that is, financial hardships, you name it, we would love to hear from you and potentially have you on as a guest. That's how we support each other in this community. We all share our voices, express what we've gone through, and that's how we live full out. So reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com uh, to share your story. Um, and then coming up in our next segment, obviously, we're going to be taking your calls. So again, today it is all about embracing who we are. That is the ticket. That is what it means to live full out and have a smile in your face, passion in your heart, and know that you're leading a purposeful life. We'll be right back. I'm Nancy Scaleri. This is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg roll showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, wait. Um, I just got a message. So many comments on my comment. Hey, guys, check out my wait. new video game. Mom, what? Huh? Pew, pew. What'd you say? This huh? weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. It's against my religion. I'm giving my dog a bath. You can have pictures of that. Pressure gives me hives. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. Hold on. Let me ask my mom. Sorry, my webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. Unfortunately, I just had my clothes surgically attached to my body. If they got out, I might never be president. I'm already naked, under my clothes. Not even if you were all three Jonas Brothers. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. The more you ask, the less I want to. You're not the boss of me. Nudity makes me vomit. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that's not cool .com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a, warm place on a, I want to be a football I stadium. I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. What? What about our plan to win the lottery and start living? You know, travel the world on matching yachts. Wear enough jewelry to require a bodyguard. Vacation on the French Riviera. And then buy it. You know we're never going to win the lottery, right? 
When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. To embrace who you are means that you look at the positive attributes of who you are. Maybe physically, is it your smile, your eyes, your swagger when you walk? Is it your mind, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the person that you are inside? It's important to figure out who you are and all those positive attributes. That's how you live full out. That's how you shine in a big way. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. And today we've been talking about embracing who you are and You know, it's kind of funny because what does that really mean? Well, I want you to look in yourself in the mirror today and find one quality physically that you like about yourself. Then I want you to call somebody, friend or family, and I want you to tell, ask them to tell you a story, something that impressed them that you've done or a trait that you have that that they admire. And I want you to kind of put together these golden moments of who you are. That's how you start to embrace who you are, is sometimes you feel it, you know it, you see it for yourself, and other times people have to remind us about our positive sides. But that is a large part of what it means to live full out and really feel confident and proud. Now, we're going to be coming to uh, the phone lines now. I hear from our producer that we have a caller on the line. We'll say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for calling in. How can we help you? Um, so I just graduated high school not so long ago, and I decided to take a skip year before I go back into college, and I'm currently just having trouble finding a job and debating if I just should go straight into college or what I should do in general. Mm. Now, the reason why you decided to hold off is financial, to make money for school, Mm -hmm. okay? That is to be respected, Okay, number one, you, you, you made the right decision, not because you necessarily wanted to, because you had to, and I respect that, okay? So then the next part is to find a job, right? Why are you having a mm-hmm. difficulty finding a job, or do you find that you're not qualified enough, or you're overqualified, or what's going on there? Um, I'm just finding trouble, I'm just having trouble finding a job that uh, speaks to me, something I'd have to be interested in. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's a lot of jobs in my life that I got to tell you, I wasn't really like passionate about, you know, <laughs> bartending, waiting <laughs> tables, you know, I think I did a couple temp jobs. Sometimes you just do what you have to do to make the money that you need to make to pay the bills that you need to pay to to achieve the goal that you want. Okay, so just know that whatever job you end up taking now, it's not your forever job, but it's the job that gets you from here to your next point, right? So I want you to take away a little bit of the stress that it has to be this big, passionate job that you're super, super into. Because sometimes, actually, taking a job that feels unknown to us, like, I don't know what this is going to be like, it will actually teach you things. Even sometimes a desk job can teach you things internally about yourself that you wouldn't have known or business skills that you may not have gotten. Sometimes a job at a restaurant teaches people how to work in groups or, you know, how to be more hospitable or how to be, you know, how to, um, you know, really respect customer service. I mean, my days as a server really has me going, wow, I'm going to tip that person 20% because I know how hard it is, right? So (laughs) there's a learning in any job that you take. Right now, you just want to go out there, blitz the marketplace, find a job. The first person who calls you back, if it pays the right amount, say, you know what? I'm just going to try this. It's not my forever job, but you know what? It's going to allow me to start making money, learn some new skills, learn more about myself, make the money I need to do to go to school. Sometimes you just have to do it. 
You know what I mean? Because my fear yeah. is, is if you keep waiting for like the quote, quote, perfect job, this is not the time in your life where you need the perfect job. You just need the job to get you to school. Do you see what I'm saying? So take that off your plate. Can you do that? Yes, thank you. You got it. Thank you so much for calling in. And I know great things are ahead. You just have to continue to believe that. Okay? Thank you for calling in. Mm -hmm. And for everybody who called in today, thank you. You know, we welcome your questions. We're standing by always to help give you motivation and resources. And, uh, you know, the entire Living Fill Out family, you know, we show up every every day. We just want to make sure that, you know, we're bringing the best guests, the best themes and resources to support you in the future. So we'd like to hear from you. What topics would you like us to cover? Reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. We'd really like to know what are the challenges that you are facing. We can bring guests that will inspire you to keep going and get to the other side. Again, go to livingfullout.com to hear today's show again, or go to the, if you go to our homepage, actually, you can see the radio station, 24 hours of Living Full Out. Go to the app stores, just search Living Full Out there too. And most of all, here's to you Living Full Out, because I get it, embracing who you are, sometimes that's, that's quite the journey. And it might take your entire life, but you know what? Explore, have fun, laugh a lot, okay? Be patient and enjoy the journey. Don't worry too much, okay? That's from my heart to yours and my last coaching of the day. Until then, here's to living your life full out. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.